stocks discussed on Phil's Gang are not in any way a recommendation or solicitation to buy, sell, or hold. If considering acting on information presented, we first recommend you seek out a competent, licensed professional for advice. Get ready for the radio show that tells you what Wall Street doesn't want you to know. Oh, I'm a money magnet. Money, money, money's coming to me. Money sets me free. I'm a money magnet. Money, 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 money's coming to me. It's your daily dose of how to manage your money. And now it's time for Phil's Gang on the Off the Wall Street Radio Network. With your host, Phil Grandy. There looks to be a rash of optimism breaking out over the economy among both businesses and consumers. The latest survey from the National Association for Business Economics finds the three-month outlook for sales, profit, and CapEx surging. That's a lot of nuts! That sure is. That's a lot of nuts. Bank of America came out with a poll. Shows U.S. stock optimism is at the highest level since 2021. That's because these gains are based on the fake Business News Network putting forward this fake narrative of hope and optimism and belief that the Federal Reserve is just going to do six rate cuts, going to introduce again or reintroduce again QE, zero rates, and this is going to cause a financial condition like this from 2008 to 2020, uh, uh, 2020 before we had the crash. They're going to this great economic growth. Rates are going to be cut much lower. Mortgage rates will make housing more affordable. Allow more homeowners to refinance. Low rates will increase corporate spending. Encourage business investment. That's a joke. They <laughs> all the zero rates since 2008 when they lied to us. Obama, remember, said all this money is going to be used as business investment. It never was used for QE. So that's where all this encouragement is coming from. That's what's going on. And that all these higher stock prices will boost consumers' wealth and help increase their confidence, which will spur more spending. I mean, it's like... Goldilocks. They love it. Everything's okay now. But wait a minute. Hello, there's a problem. It's breath. Breath is negative. There's 11 sectors in the market. In the S&P, there's 500 stocks. In the whole market, active stocks. Over 5,000. But the rally's coming from not all 11 sectors, but one sector. And even that one sector, tech, stock is, the stocks that are rallying are four. Remember, what caused the rally on Friday, on the 19th of January? Microsoft, NVIDIA, J.P. Morgan, and GE, and remember, you had to be in those prior to the rally, like our gang members were in them prior to the rally, because those are called power stocks. We had them in these stocks early on. This is amazing. Optimism? What are they, nuts? Here we go again, just like 2023, the S&P, up 24%. Everybody's all excited. But when you took a look at the S&P, the 500 stocks, again, out of the 24%, most all of that except for 4%, maybe 5%, were the same handful of tech stocks. NVIDIA, Microsoft, and Meta, the same ones. They've been carrying this whole market since 2008. Now, this is all coming from the, the excitement's coming from the tourist trader. That's right, the tourist trader. Now, remember the tourist trader, he's, he, he's out there, he's so excited. He's so excited, he can't handle it. He thinks everything's just going to continue to be just ducky. Everything's fine. And you know why? 
because he always buys right smack at the top. Right at the top. Unbelievable. He's been doing that forever. He, he started to do that going back in the dot-coms. Remember? The tourist investor during the dot-com, he buys right at the top. Right at the top. That's where they buy. And then the market makers squeeze everybody, thinking, squeeze the shorts, because everybody thinks, oh, the market's going to go higher. It's going to just keep going up forever. That's what they do with the dot com. It's called the short squeeze. But what happens? They're in there, panic. I got to get in. I got to get in these tourists. I got to get in before it goes higher. Got to get in before it goes higher. And what are we doing? The professionals like us, we're going, here, have our stock. Sure, you can have ours. Take ours. And then as the stocks were going down from 2001 down to 2003, they're losing money all the way down. Then when they got to the bottom, they start panic selling. Get me out. Get me out before stocks go lower. Get me out. And we're there buying their stocks at a discount. Same thing happened with the housing con. They got, again, didn't learn their lesson. Got right in at the top of the housing financial con. Right at the top. Shorts were squeezed. Mark had that one big last rally. And then it stops. It always does. Because remember, it's the panic buying at the top from these tourists who start the short squeeze. And then all of a sudden when it's over, they look back, stock starts going down. And as the stocks are going down, we're shorting the market. Just like we shorted the backside of the dot-com, we shorted the backside of the housing com. And then when it got down to the bottom, they panicked. The tourists, get me out, get me out. I'm losing money, get me out before it goes lower. And then we're there to buy the stocks at a deep discount. Then the stocks, of course, turn around and go up. But they still don't learn their lesson. All they say is, wait a minute, what happened to me? Every time I get in, the stock market goes down. Every time I get out, the stock market goes up. That's what they say, because they don't get it. Because they keep buying at the top, panic buying, and keep buying or selling at the bottom, panic selling. And that's where professionals like us do all the buying. They did the same thing with the housing con, the dot con. They did the same thing with in 2020, when we had that crash, remember? We had the 2020 crash, the COVID crash, as they call it. It wasn't the COVID crash. It had nothing to do with COVID. It had to do with high interest rates. Every time interest rates go up, stocks go down. And then remember, in, uh, we had another uh, rally, January 2022. January 2022. Same thing happened. They bought right at the top. Right at the top. Another squeeze. They got, I got to get in there going. I got to get in before it goes higher. This is January 2022. What happened? Boom. It went down. Went down. 25% 2022. I mean 23 rather. So, that's right. That was 2022. They did the same thing in July 2023 after that rally. And now they're doing the same thing again. So you can go back to the dot-com, the housing con. You can go to the COVID con. You can go to the, to the January 2022 rally. You can go to 2023. You can go to uh, 2024 where now they do the same thing over and over and over. They always make the same mistake because they got the fake business network behind them. Telling them how things are going to be great. Everything's wonderful. I mean, did, we, we heard that all day yesterday from these clowns. We've maintained the straight, uh, strong job market, easing prices, rising real wages. Isn't that amazing? And none of that is true. That's not happening. That's not happening. More when we get back. Join my gang. Get into the stocks at the right time. Want more information on this show? Go to philsgang.com or give them a call at 877-600-GANG.
Welcome back. Learn, invest, and make profits with Phil Grandy. Simply go to philsgang.com. Now, here's Phil. And welcome back to Phil's Gang. So that's what's going on. Everybody's so excited about this rally, but they did the same thing with all the other rallies. Dot com, housing con, COVID con, January 2022. They're called short squeeze. Every time you get to the top, they all think the same. The market's never going to go down again. And the problem is these tourist traders never learn their lesson. They always buy right at the top. That's okay, because we then, us, the professionals in my gang, we sell them the stock. Here, take ours. And then when they take our stock, we start shorting. We get ahead of them, making money as it goes down. Then as the market keeps going down, they're losing money, losing money. They get to the near the bottom, they panic. They think it's going to go down much lower. Get me out, get me out. you got to get me out before it goes lower. And then we come in and buy the stocks at wholesale. And then stocks take off, and they sit back, what happened? I just got out, and they went up. Every time I get in, it goes down. Every time I get out, it goes up. Because they don't know what the hell they're doing. They're listening to, the, they're listening to Wall Street. I mean, yesterday was unbelievable. Listening to the White House. I mean, listen, listen again what they said yesterday. This is just all BS. We've maintained the straight, uh, strong job market, easing prices, uh, rising real wages, and now we've got this stock market result, which I, which I would argue is no accident. It's based on... A- yeah, it was no accident. You're right. It was financially engineered. It was no accident. You're darn right. Households doing well? This is Bernstein, one of the biggest liars ever. He works for the White House. Everybody knows he's a liar. How can everything be great? When the White House own survey shows four in ten Americans, this is the White House survey, shows four in ten Americans rate their financial situation as poor. But they come out and lie. Also, while the stock market is hitting all time highs, the gap between economic expectations and current conditions remain incredibly negative. The average household under Biden is spending $4,500 more for the same goods they were purchasing under Trump. Under Biden, the prices since he's been president have risen more than food price, more than 9.1%. Energy, 33%. The Fed, between 2008 and 2023, has printed $8 trillion. They printed eight. That's so inflationary, $8 trillion. So they go in and purchase from the CEOs of publicly traded companies that after 2008, these companies ready to go out of business. But instead of letting them go out of business and let the strong survive, what they do? They printed $8 trillion. And they took that $8 trillion and they went in and bought from these, ter- these companies and banks that were going under, especially banks, their assets, their troubled assets, treasuries, mortgage-backed securities. They're giving these companies, including banks, 100 cents on the dollar when this garbage was worth 10 to 15 cents on the dollar. 100% on the dollar. And then, they're putting, then the Federal Reserve puts it on their balance sheet which screws you and me. When they went from $800 billion to $8 trillion, you know what that means? You and I get screwed. Interest rates go up. So, $0.100 cents on the dollar. Take $8 trillion. And they maintained this for 14 years. They never stop. It's called QE. So what was going on for 14 years? The consequences we had to face, the Main Street consequences, they had to face these things. What they had to face was this. It didn't stimulate economic GDP growth, the 14 years of QE, the 14 years when they went and bought all the garbage treasuries and all the garbage mortgages and put it on the balance sheet, the Fed's balance sheet, to give these people more cash to stay alive, especially the banks. What are you talking about? It didn't stimulate the economy or growth. It didn't create jobs. It hurt Main Street, standard of living. Because, remember, every time they put this garbage on their balance sheet from $800 billion to $8 trillion, remember the consequences. 
They lie and say, oh, it creates jobs. No, it doesn't. It hurts Main Street the worst. hurts Main Street standard of living. It exposes Main Street working and middle class to higher interest rates, to higher inflation, while the CEOs of Wall Street, including members of Congress, become much richer than they already were. So much for our Senate and House Banking Committee, who's, who says their job is about keeping our economy on sound footing by focusing on inflation and on our working and middle class families. They did exactly the opposite. They screwed them. They screwed them. Facts. Between 2003 and 2023, the percent of debt to GDP has increased from 62% to 111%. That means when we borrow money from China and, and our enemies, they're going to jack up their rates to us. In fact, our credit's been graded downward. So when you have a high percent of debt to economic growth, when our range went from 62%, our debt, 62% of GDP to 111%, that doubled. The Fed balance sheet went from $725 billion to $8 trillion. That's insane. Deficits increased. Think of that. Deficits increased from minus 0.2% average. We always were carrying, on average, deficits that were 0.2% of GDP. Now they're four times... 4.9% of GDP. Savings dropped from 12% of GDP to 0.7%, 7 tenths of 1% of GDP. What are you, nuts? Savings decreased by $3.1 to $200 billion. Decreased while inflation was increasing from 1.9% to 3.4% or real inflation, 12.8%. Inflation as a percentage of families' income went from 4.1% to 8%. Doubled. Doubled. And under Biden, net savings has dropped from an average of 8% of GDP, or from $2 trillion, to a negative. Negative. Join my gang. This way here, you'll always be getting in the right stocks at the right time. Want more information on this show? Go to philsgang.com or give them a call at 877-600-GANG. Welcome back. Learn, invest, and make profits with Phil Grandy. Simply go to philsgang.com. Now, here's Phil. Welcome back to Phil's Gang. So, I mean, if you're going to continue to listen to these people, you're going to go broke. You're going to go broke. I mean, it's amazing. Just remember, every rally like this. Remember, we were in this rally. The stocks that broke out that created the breakout was Microsoft, NVIDIA, J.P. Morgan, and Goldman Sachs. We were in those stocks. They're called power stocks. We have our members in all our power stocks. Those are stocks that don't have all kinds of sellers above them. In this kind of market, you got to make sure you're in power stocks where there's few sellers above you. It's called power. In relative strength stocks, that's what you got to be in. We'd be more than happy to help you do it. Just join my gang. Try it for 10 days. It's free. I mean, when I listen to this garbage here, l l listen, listen, listen to this. If the economy's performance is about as good as it gets, why do you say that recession risks are still elevated at 25 percent? <laughs> All right. And then you got consumer sentiment has improved amid a drop in gasoline prices, solid stock market gains, price at the pump. Of Wait a minute. Stock, you know how few people in this country are in the stock market? When Bank of America polls and shows U.S. stock optimism at the highest level since 2021. Because remember, there's very few people in the stock market. Very few. Not everybody in this country is in the stock. People don't realize that. But listen to this. This is unbelievable. 
consumer sentiment has improved. No, consumer sentiment hasn't improved. What the consumer is hearing is how rates are going to be cut. That's why the stock market is going up. The federal, the fake business network in Wall Street put together this fake narrative. They're going to cut rates four to six times. That's what's pushing up the market. So uh, not forget yesterday when we had an equally nice upside uh, surprise on retail sales, very clearly connected to the strong labor market. Easy. Give me a break. First of all, the retail sales didn't improve. Prices went up, not the number of units. I wish they were forced to reflect on the number of units. So in other words, they'll say, okay, in, um, in, um, in January of last year, uh, retail sales were up um, $1 million. This year, they're up uh, $1,200,000. Wow, look at that. Consumers are strong. We went from $1 million to $1,200,000. Wow. Well, what they don't tell you is there wasn't there wasn't more units sold. It was the cost. It was inflation that had, they had to move the prices up. So in other words, let's say the one million they sold a thousand units at one million. At one point two, they only sold eight hundred units instead of a thousand units. But the price is up because of inflation. But they don't tell you that. What we know is, as you've said, inflation is down two-thirds from its peak. We also know that prices have been falling, not, not, not disinflation, deflation, lower prices, gas, milk. Now, wait a minute. You know, they, they, when you still go to the supermarket and you go and you buy meat, I buy meat. I go, look, and, and I still say to them, wait a minute, this is crazy. I don't sit there and say, well, meat went down 2.2% or 3.3% or went down from 9% to 6%. The damn meat's still too expensive. Nobody cares. It's still too expensive. You can't afford it, like gasoline. Whether it's $5 or 4 it goes from 5 to $4 or $4 to 3 or 3 to 2 You can't afford it. What difference does it make? This guy doesn't know what the hell he's talking about. He does know what he's talking about. He's lying. But you've just had a pretty big reversal from 12.2% um, net profit margin in Q3 to now the estimate is is only a little more than 10%. So that's a deceleration again in profit margins. And it's just telling you that companies are having a little bit more difficulty. Sure, they're having difficulty because remember, they're paying in zero interest rates for their money for almost 14 years. They didn't have to pay interest on their money. And when they had, they got their money, remember, we were promised by Bernanke and Obama. He told all, both of them told us that money was going to be used for business investment. That money is going to be used by machinery, equipment, so we could produce more. And when you produce more goods, then you hire more people. Wages go up. But none of that money went into new machinery, new equipment. It went into stock buybacks. Stock buybacks. Pushing up the stock market. And very few people, very few Americans are in the stock market. What's the population? I forgot. Three, uh, one point, what is it? 350 million. Look up for me. How many, how many people are in the stock market? I mean, the percentage is so tiny. And then you got, then you got um, 58%, 58%. And most of that is 401ks, 401ks. Steve Leisman telling us how great everything is, right? He was the same guy that said this. People are feeling flush in their accounts, spending more than our income coming in. People he, he was celebrating. People were spending more than their income coming in. Now he's telling us how great the economy is. Look, <clears throat> what you want to do, okay, again, get ready. <clears throat> this rally, if they're going to extend this rally, if, if they're that bold to go back to QE, to drop interest rates, to create more inflation because it's an election year and they don't care they're creating inflation because the people who control the stock market will control the Federal Reserve, they're very, very wealthy and they make money on inflation. So maybe they don't care. 
So if they go back to zero rates, do you realize the cost of goods that are going to go up from gasoline to milk to butter to all the things you need to the essentials? Gas, it would be incredible if they go back to zero rates. And again, remember, when it was zero rates, these companies, these companies were buying their own shares back. They weren't, they weren't taken and buying new equipment, new machinery. Now these companies, if the economy does turn around for them, they're not ready to go because they got 14-year-old, 15-year-old equipment and technology. That's the other problem we got in this country. None of these, the CEOs were getting so wealthy with stock buybacks. Why would they buy, why would they do any business investment? So remember this, the reason right now it's the tourist trader who is driving this market. He's always drove the market after the rally. Rallies are overextended by the tourists. They don't know what they're doing. They have no clue what they're doing. They only they see the market going up and it kills them. I got to get in before it goes up. I got to get in before it goes higher. Now, that's what is extending this rally, just like it extended the dot-com rally, the housing rally, the COVID rally, and the January 2022 rally. And they all collapsed, didn't they? So why are we going to be so lucky to think this rally is not going to collapse when we have even a worse set of circumstances, like inflation, productivity is down, manufacturing is down, come on. But we got, again, a great opportunity because what they're going to do as the market starts coming down, just like the last time with the dot com, the housing com, and the COVID con, when those markets started to come down, we short them. And then when we get down to the bottom, they panic. The tourists bring, get me out, get me out, get me out. And then you buy their stock on sale. You load up on their stock on sale, buy it on pennies on the dollar practically because they want to get out so badly. And then they're out, you got the stock, market turns, boom, you're making money. That's how you buy stocks. You buy stocks when nobody wants them. Like right now, I'll talk to you about our oil when we get back. Oil and our gold, what we're doing with those. Those are going to be, a, they're, they're going to be terrific profits, terrific profit center. More when I get back. Join my gang, free for 10 days. Philsgang.com, check it out. Want more information on this show? Go to philsgang.com or give them a call at 877-600-GANG. Welcome back to the Phil's Gang Radio Show. Want to know more about Phil's Gang? Go to philsgang.com or give us a call at 877-600-GANG, 877-600-4264. There looks to be a rash of optimism breaking out over the economy among both businesses and consumers. The latest survey from the National Association for Business Economics finds the three-month outlook for sales, profit, and CapEx surging. This is the same guy who said this. People are feeling flush in their accounts, spending more than our income coming in. Yeah, they just make this stuff up. You know, the, the thing that's wonderful about charting is that you don't have to go around reading everything, researching everything. Now, years ago, when we were buying companies and we were paying brokers commissions in today's dollars, two, three hundred dollars, rather than now for five dollars, ten dollars, in those days, you had to find companies that were a good company, bad management, gotten beaten down, and then the value is way down, and you go and buy it, and you stay with it for five, ten years, and then you finally sell it. That's the way it used to be. Those days are gone forever. And no more today do you look at a company and say, I wonder what its P.E. ratio is. I wonder, I wonder what the price to sales, price to book. 
I wonder how management's doing. I'm going to check on management. How do you check on management? You check return on assets and return on equity. I'll check that out. How about the profit margins? Margins are important. Free cash flow, that's really important. None of that matters anymore because they buy the stock first and market up to you. That was the result of discount brokerage. So charting, you don't have to go through the pain of research. And all this research they tell you they're doing, right, the brokers and planners and research, they know it's a bunch of nonsense because it's all about pricing today. None of that stuff means anything anymore. It's how much money is going into that particular stock. How much money is going to the S&P or how much money is going into IWM. People aren't realizing the small mid-cap stocks are everything. They're the basis of our country. And do you understand? They're 20% away from a new high. While you got the Dow and the S&P and the NASDAQ, they hit all new highs. You know how dangerous that is? When you have a divergence between the S&P and, uh, and the small mid-cap stocks, that's, that's telling you right there, there's one hell of a crash coming. Inverted yield curve. You know, inverted yield curves are, are, are brutal. Inverted yield curves are really, really bad. But most people don't even think about them. I mean, and, and you got to because the, the inverted yield curve is and when it's, when you have them for so long, like we've had some for two years. Are you kidding? That, that, that's telling you you're going to have a recession like you never had. It's a guaranteed recession. Remember that. And our government. We haven't got a sound government. Are you kidding? Were you nuts? We don't have a sound government. We have, think about it. Our government, right, borrows $5 billion per day. They're still borrowing 40% of the money it spends. It's spending $10 billion a day, $121,000 a second. The federal debt keeps increasing. Our federal debt went from $404 billion to $34 trillion. When Obama was in office, it was at nine, he, he doubled it to about $9 trillion. Now it's thirty-four trillion, and then the government keeps borrowing forty percent of of what they're spending. It's a killer. Unbelievable. And we get you know, and, and the good thing, remember what, what screwed everything up too was the gold standard. When they got rid of the gold standard in nineteen seventy, it was one of the worst things they could have done because. When you had the gold standard on, every time they printed a dollar, they had to have one dollar of gold. If they didn't have the one dollar of gold, they couldn't print a dollar. That was a good thing. Because productivity and wages increased on the same percentage, almost the same. But once they got rid of the gold standard, you could print all the money you want. People went crazy printing money. The government went crazy printing money. So productivity doubled, triple. And when you have too much money going into the money system and you're not producing fast enough, that's what's created the inflation. And that's why wages aren't keeping up. Wages never will keep up with inflation again until we get back to a gold standard. That's why we got to get back to a gold standard. Because if you have a gold standard, then productivity and wages go up together. When you take the standard gold standard away, productivity shoots up like a rocket ship. And what happens is they print and print and print and print. And all of a sudden you got so you got more money than you got productivity. Now it turns around the other way. So the wages are the ones that get screwed. Now think about that for a moment. If we would go back to the gold standard, then our productivity and our wages would go up together. Wouldn't that be nice? We wouldn't have to worry. We wouldn't have to worry about all this money. And the money, I mean, we, we, keep, we have so much money out there. 
in the system more money than productivity. And that's what's causing, also causing our inflation. So the stock market, you could always be making money no matter if the market's going up or the market's going down. You just got to stop listening to all the garbage, turn it all out, and you follow the money. As I said, a chart. And our charts that we design, I believe, are the best. So remember what a chart does. It takes in all the information. It takes in economic information. It takes in financial information. It takes in information on puts and calls. It takes information on unemployment. It takes information, all the information, anything you can think of, it comes in like a big sponge. And then it sorts it out. And then you look for, okay, where's the pricing power? Where's the price of the stock going up or down? Or the price of the S&P, the market, or the Dow? All of a sudden it's going up. It's going up because it's taking in all this information it went through the system. They've ascertained now the pricing power is going to go up or down. That's all you need to know. So, is for example, the stocks that we got into, ask my gang members. We got into the, the same stocks that drove last Friday's big breakout. Those are power stocks. We were already in those stocks. We we're already in the, You always have to be in these stocks before the rallies occur. And you always have to be out before the crash occurs. 85% of people in the market, nope. They always buy at the top and they sit there and buy and hold, buy and hold. All they hear is buy and hold, buy and hold, buy and hold. That's all they do. And then when the market goes down, they're sitting there buying and holding. And anybody that tells you diversify, split up your bonds and split up your stocks 60-40, even Warren Buffett said you diversify yourself right into the poorhouse because there's no place to hide when the market goes down. But in the meantime, while we're having a rally like this, and remember, this rally can continue for another week. Two. If, they, if all of a sudden they start talking again about cutting rates, cutting rates, cutting rates, QE, QE, they can keep this rally going. And stay with it. So, but what stocks do you stay with? You stay with the stocks that don't have sellers around it. That's right. You stay with your power stocks. We did that. And, and our power stocks, especially, and I'm going to try to find them quickly here, running out of time. But our, our power stocks, I mean, we did beautiful with those. And, and those power stocks were the ones that you're there right here Meta, Microsoft, uh, GE. Uh, the same ones right there, NVIDIA, J.P. Morgan, GE, uh, the, the four that made this market break out and run on Friday was Microsoft, NVIDIA, J.P. Morgan, GE. Those were part of our power stocks, along with Home Depot, Lowe, Walmart, Costco. We, we bought uh, Visa. You've got to be in the stocks where there's hardly any sellers above you. Join my gang, and we'll get you into those stocks. Philsgang.com. Please remember St. Jude. You have been listening to Phil's Gang with your host, Phil Grandy, on the Off the Wall Street Radio Network. Off the Wall Street Radio Network. Remember to visit Phil's website at 